talk about the plank position. So if we are doing a full on plank today, that is the goal, then we are going to start here and I'll show you some modifications along the way. So full on plank position, extremely important because we're gonna use this position for pretty well every other plank type movement, like your push-ups, um, your swings, your deadlifts, your chest presses, mountain climbers, the list goes on, right? So you're gonna use plank position for a lot of different movements in your workouts. Now it's super important that we get the plank nailed down so that you can be set up for success. So to start off, we're gonna start with the full plank and then we'll work our way down to a modified plank so that you can see where what you need to apply for where you're at today. Starting off with your hands just wider than your shoulders. So you wanna make sure that your thumbs are pointed towards each other so that your arms are slight, slight angle. You'll notice my arms are just barely out. This is intentional, it's almost like a kickstand into the joint versus straight up and down and pushing into the back of the shoulders, okay? So hands are a little bit wider than your chest. If you need to, if you're using a yoga mat for your workout today, make sure that your middle fingers are in line with um, the edge of your mat. That might help you a little bit. Of course, if you have longer arms, it might be your index finger. Um, but with my midget arms, it's typically my middle. So that's where we're gonna start with that. From there, we're gonna push into the hands, make sure we turn those elbows in so that we're gonna rotate that shoulder back into its socket, pack that lat in, and really focus on keeping that core I mean, not that core, that shoulder control, that shore, shoulder stability. And then we're gonna plant the toes back behind us. So once we get here, we wanna walk those toes in a little bit, almost like you're getting an extension out of the calves. Okay, make sure that those feet are pulled together. Tuck the tailbone in, squeeze through the butt cheeks, making sure that you are cinching your hips to your ribs, almost like you are knitting that closed together. So just watching that you're not flaring through the rib cage here, we are going to knit them close together holding tension through the core, creating basically a box out of the abdomen. So you have a solid wall here, solid wall here, and two solid walls on the side, okay? That's going to hold all your organs in, it's gonna hold the stability and the comfortability out of your back as well, which is obviously very important in this movement. So back into the position, hands a little bit wider than your shoulders, planting into your toes, walk your toes in a little bit, pull up on your kneecaps, Squeeze your butt cheeks and tuck that tailbone back in. Knit your rib cage closed. And the last thing I want you to do before you do anything else, if you're moving in this position, you're going to pull your head back. So it is extremely important that you pay attention to where your head is and watch that you are not just tucking your chin to your chest. You can see that this is, exposes the cervical spine, aka your neck. This is what this is going to do. It's going to actually loosen your core. So we want to come into a nice neutral spine, like if you were walking down the street, looking forward. And then I want you just to pull your head back slightly. So you get a nice soft double chin here, looking good, I know. Tuck it in, but that way what you're doing is you're pulling the muscles back in the spine, actually hugging the spine, allowing it to be supported in this position, okay? So when you're in your plank, you're gonna do the same thing. So you're not looking at your toes, you're not looking ahead. When you're looking at your toes, you can see automatically I'm gonna round through the spine, right? If I'm looking ahead, I'm more likely to drop my hips up. So we're gonna find that full on plank position and then pull the head back just slightly. You're gonna notice that you feel a little bit of a rounding in the shoulder blades, but that's perfectly normal, perfectly fine. And you're gonna hold on tight here. Now, if you need to modify, first things first, come up to an incline. So find yourself the edge of a couch, find yourself the edge of a coffee table, the edge of your table, and do the exact same position in an incline position. If you've watched the push up video, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, go back and watch that and you'll know exactly what I'm speaking of. If that's not available to you for whatever reason, then by all means, we can come down to a kneeling plank. Same thing, we're gonna just squeeze the butt cheeks together, make sure that those elbows are rotated forward so your lats are fired on, and pull your head back just that little bit. Your eyes are essentially either in line with your middle fingers or about two inches ahead and right in the middle of that triangle. So you're making a triangle with your hands and where your eyes are. That is your plank, my friends. I hope that helps. Now, for that's the basis of your plank. Now, if you really struggle with your wrists, what I want you to do is two things. One, we're going to make sure that you pull up on your knuckles. Extremely important, simple thing that you can add in, but it will make a massive, massive difference in your positioning. So what you're gonna do, so instead of having nice flat hands, A, you wanna make sure your fingers are super wide. Spread your fingertips apart, and then you're gonna pull up on the knuckles, keeping the, pad the 
of your fingers planted, but your knuckles, the middle knuckles, are lifted up. What this is going to do, I wish you could see my hands in that position. What that's going to do is it's going to make it so that you are putting more pressure into the fingertips and less pressure into the wrist here, okay? The last thing that you can do is if you have a yoga mat that you're using, roll your yoga mat up so you have a little bit of a lift under your hands. Now, I don't have a yoga mat available to me. I got a pillow. So you're going to see what that looks like. You want to make sure that your hands are right on the edge. Now, because my pillows are a little bit flat, they're old, you're going to plant your, the edge of your palm onto that item, whatever that might be, and then do the same thing. That's going to do the exact same thing, put more pressure into the fingertips and less pressure into the wrist. So play with those positions a little bit, depending on your body, depending on what you have available. Do what you can to decrease that angle if your wrist really gets sore so that it's about this position rather than this position, right? So you can do that by rolling up a yoga mat. You can put a towel underneath your wrist, around, just along the edge of it. You can um, grab a little block. You can do whatever works best for you. Grab a book, a movie, whatever. Something that's gonna make it so that you're not in such an extreme flexion of your wrist, but that you have a little bit more of an angle there, okay? That is your plank, you guys. I hope that helps. Let me know if you have any questions along the way.